All right, we're back, and yes, we're gonna discuss one of the most popular consoles ever, the Super Nintendo, which, can you believe, is turning 26 years old come November 21st, 2017. In honor of its birthday, we will be discussing the Super Nintendo in some super detail. We're going to look at 10 things you never knew your old Super Nintendo could do, because if you didn't know them by now, you probably never know them, unless you watch this video. If you haven't clicked the like button, be sure to do so and subscribe to our channel. Let's get into it. It's a chameleon. Oh yeah, that's right. Your Super Nintendo could be a color changer. Or rather, it will change color over time, regardless of how it's maintained. If so, consider yourself lucky because your Super Nintendo was amongst the very earliest produced. Yup. The most original of the original Super Nintendos were manufactured with ABS plastic, which just so happens to be flammable. To counteract this flammability, the plastic is often mixed with flame retardant materials, as was the case for the Super Nintendo. However, as with all first releases, the mixing process was not perfected on the early SNESs and as such, changed color. Over the course of several years, the nice gray plastic you love will mature and develop into a lovely yellow. Seriously, this thing turns yellow, it's ridiculous. It turns out that it's all because of ABS Plastic's reaction to UV light. More than likely, your Super Nintendo, if you still have it, is gray. If not, who knows, maybe you'll be able to flip a profit. Something tells us that if the yellow Super Nintendos can command a premium, they'll be all the rage online. Let us know in the comments if yours is yellow. Use a mouse. Okay, okay, try to contain yourself. Did you know you can play Super Nintendo using a mouse and mouse pad? Yeah, super gangster style. Though it looks a little small, as in child size small and cute in a bad way, we can think of no better way to game. We want it to be like shooting fish in a barrel really badly, but we suspect the mouse is absolutely awful. As you may have remembered, the mouse and mouse pad were originally released as a bundle package in combination with Mario Paint. It was made for Mario Paint, but it also worked for Acme Animation Factory, Doom, Jurassic Park, and Lemmings 2, just to name a few. When looking at the mouse, it resembles all things 1990s. This thing just reflects a period in time where Home Alone type ingenuity was all the rage. In the end, the mouse and mouse pad were only a small scratch in the ridiculous peripherals for a gaming console. For example, take a look at the Super Scope 6, or the Zapper. If they were willing to produce those, you'd bet they'd produce a mouse and mouse pad. So big shout out to those brave creators and the innovations we hold so dear. The Super Multitap. Now this may be a reason to repurchase a Super Nintendo, maybe several controllers and some games, because did you know that you can play with up to five players using the Super Multitap? We didn't either. With four ports on the Super Multitap and one remaining port available on the Super Nintendo, you get five. And let's be honest, playing video games with your friends is the best way to play. There's always a time for serious gaming, but when you're just with your buddies, this is a great way to go. No subscriptions, no extra fees, just play. Plug and play, baby. Initially, the Super Multitap was a part of a bundle purchase to include Super Bomberman, but it was eventually sold as a standalone product. Perhaps most surprising, though, are the games you can play using the Super Multitap. Get ready to be blown away. Using the Super Multitap, you can play NBA Jam Tournament Edition, Super Bomberman, Super Bomberman 2, Secret of Mana, Smash Tennis, and Madden 95. Yeah, you heard that correctly. You can revisit classic sports games like Madden 95, Smash Tennis, and NBA Jam with four of your best friends. Now is time to re-up. Play golf. Continuing on with this wave of enthusiasm, we present to you TV Golf, the only video golf game with swing. A digital golf club peripheral measuring a laughable 26 inches long. Who knows, with enough practice, you can end up playing with the pros. For those who don't know, an average male and average female are approximately 5 feet 10 inches and 5 feet 5 inches respectively. Meaning, a 26 inch golf club would be best suited for someone in the sub 5 foot range around four feet, eight inches, which is the average height of a 10 year old. But don't worry if you need a shorter club because Nintendo has you covered. By also offering a length adapter, the TV Golf allows you to shorten the club. Who knew there's an adapter for anything? Genius. 
Maybe this game was just meant to be for kids, but who knows, the club could pair with any of their golf games. PGA Tour Golf was among the most popular, which seems pretty grown up to us, so maybe it's not just for kids. Now that we don't have to ask our parents to purchase digital golf clubs for us, maybe we'll just have to find out for ourselves. Play baseball. Another sports peripheral, the Batter Up, brought digital baseball bats to the Super Nintendo. In the mid-90s, baseball was all the rage, so it's not surprising this idea made it to the production line. Fan favorite baseball games included Ken Griffey Jr. Presents Major League Baseball, Ken Griffey Jr.'s Winning Run, Super Baseball Simulator 1000, and Tecmo Super Baseball. And guess what? You can play all of these games with the batter up. You heard us right. The best baseball games of all time on the SNES are all playable with the batter up baseball bat. Perhaps you'll remember the blue foam covering or the buttons on the side. Instead of a sensor like the golf club, this one uses switches to register each swing. What's especially great about this peripheral is that it's not comically short. At a respectable 24 inches long, two feet is probably all the length you'll need in a digital bat. Any longer would be a nuisance. So if you're nostalgia purchasing the Super Nintendo, a batter up would be a great purchase if you can find one. Scouring Amazon, we haven't found one, but there may be one lurking on eBay or at your local game shop. Pick up the bat and you're guaranteed to have an awesome stroll down memory lane. Connect online. If anyone wants to talk about the origins of online gaming, no recollection would be complete without some mention of the Super Nintendo. While online gaming might be a bit of a stretch, it was online capable nonetheless, and therefore counts. Yup, the Super Nintendo was one of the early pioneers in online gaming. Not only that, but the Super Nintendo was also one of the earliest pioneers to use a subscription billing service similar to Xbox Live. With an attachment device known as Satellaview, this device was released by Nintendo to the Japan-only market. Players were able to connect to Saint Giga, a satellite radio station where they could listen to music specific to the Saint Giga network, and also download things like extra levels, game items, and full games specific to the network. The Satellaview could connect at a specific time every day for an hour to download the latest Satellaview specific releases. Anything downloaded from the network was saved on a memory card used only for the device. Gamers were required to purchase the Satellaview to gain access to this network of valuable game additions, and the service also required a regular monthly fee. It's crazy to think this kind of connectivity was possible in the mid-90s. Play Game Boy. The Super Game Boy was an official add-on from Nintendo, designed to give players the ability to display Game Boy games on a television. It was the first time Nintendo developed a way to play Game Boy games off of the handheld device. The Super Game Boy looked almost identical to the Super Nintendo cartridge, and featured a slot at the top for players to place their Game Boy games. It released three years after the SNES launched, and gave many handheld addicts a relief from the tiny screen and the required four AA batteries. There were also a handful of titles that benefited from the Super Game Boy giving them additional sounds and a two-player option which wasn't even possible on the handheld. Where things get really impressive is that the Super Nintendo was never designed to be compatible with the Game Boy, which meant the Super Game Boy was not just a cartridge. It actually had a Game Boy CPU inside to process the games. Yup, consider these the golden years of gaming. Super Advantage Fight Stick. For the original Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo released an official fight stick called the NES Advantage. With Nintendo opting not to release a successor to the Advantage, the company Asaiware decided to manufacture one instead. Many believe this was an improvement to the original design. The Super Advantage fight stick gave fighting fans a whole new way to play titles like Street Fighter 2, Final Fight, Mortal Kombat 2, Killer Instinct, and the Clay Fighter series. The controller had a slow button in featured sliders for things like speed and turbo options, which was in contrast to the NES Advantage, which used dials. 
Arcades were still largely popular during the mid-90s, and the Super Nintendo featured a large selection of popular arcade fighters. As such, the Super Advantage Fight Stick was the perfect addition to a gamer's growing SNES collection. A Super Advantage, if you will. So how do you up the nostalgia factor and dominate your friends on old systems? Simple. Get the Super Multitap in the Super Advantage Fight Stick. While they're all plugged into old controllers, you can whip this beast out and button mash to your heart's content. After all, you've got the power of an arcade in your hands. Game Genie in the 1990s, the Game Genie was a console cheater's dream. Released for almost every console, the Game Genie allowed players to enter game-specific codes in order to unlock a plethora of game features, depending on the game. Often, these codes were in a little book some of you may remember. The Game Boy even had a special compartment to carry your cheat codes on the go. God Mode, Unlimited Ammo, and Level Warping were only some of the hacks possible through the device, which loaded into the regular SNES cartridge spot. Some games contained a performance-enhancing chip, which the Game Genie wasn't able to work with, though this was patched in later versions. But if you thought Nintendo was cool with the Game Genie, you would be wrong. As in, completely wrong. Nintendo was so frustrated with Galoob, the maker of the Game Genie, they took them to court over the device. While the lawsuit was ongoing, Nintendo started internally modifying its consoles with minor game changes so as to stop the Game Genie from working as intended. Cheating or not, the Game Genie was a lot of fun. It's not like you could post records or anything, so no harm, no foul. Not a coaster. We conclude this list with something we absolutely guarantee you did not know, unless you were working with Nintendo in the 90s. Have you ever noticed anything interesting about the original Nintendo design? Maybe how it was completely flat or the perfect spot for users to place their drinks during a marathon gaming session? They did. The original Nintendo featured a flat top design with the cartridges placed inside through the front of the system. As a result, Nintendo found out several gamers would place a large quantity of odd objects on top, namely beverages. Because of this, Nintendo figured the Nintendo Entertainment Systems would need to be serviced for drink spills. So, as a result, the designers of the Super Nintendo purposely designed a unit so it could not be used as a coaster. The reason Super Nintendo games load directly into the top of the system was to keep gamers from placing anything else on top of the console. So now you can see why your Super Nintendo Entertainment System is intentionally not flat, and they did this as a favor to you. Nowadays, they'd keep it flat and hope you spilled. Knowing ourselves, we're sure we could cram something on there if need be. Challenge accepted. Well, that's it for us. We hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to support our team by clicking the like and subscribe buttons. And if you'd like to be on the cutting edge, be sure to click the notification bell. Did you have any of these peripherals back in the day? Did you learn anything new about the Super Nintendo? Let us know in the comments section below and check out some other videos in our amazing playlist. Thanks for watching.